Hello, and welcome to another episode of Jackson Talks. Everybody with me, your host, Jackson Stone. And today is episode number 56 of Jackson Talks. Everybody, we are filming this episode currently on June 3rd, 2021. And if you're a frequent listener to this show, you know that we drop about four weeks after we film, just so I have episodes in the bank to be able to drop every single Tuesday. Um, Episodes drop on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or you can find every single episode of Jackson Talks Everybody on jacksontalkseverybody.com. So if you're a brand new listener to this show, thanks for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel or leave a comment or review on Apple. It really helps us. We really appreciate it. And by we, I mean me. I appreciate it. Um, This podcast means a lot to me and the community that we've built means a lot to me. And the people that tune in every single week, whether new or old or frequent listeners, really means a lot to me. So thanks for tuning in today. I have one very specific topic for today's podcast. So this should be a very quick podcast ranging from about 10, maybe to 20 minutes, depending on how much I ramble. Um, But today's episode will be specifically about Naomi Osaka and her mental health and pulling out of the French Open. Um, and, And as I said before, as you're listening to this, it's probably about four weeks after the incident happened. And I kind of do that on purpose as a way for me to take a few days to digest all of the information that comes out on somewhat controversial topics, whether it be mental health, Israel, Palestine, anything that's kind of going on in the world. I try not to just be reactive about it. Um, I don't post or talk about things in a performative nature. I try to talk about them um, from a sense of what it means to me, what my stance on it is, and and then I try to be about that in real life. So I try to take a few, at least a few days to try to digest the information, understand both sides, and really cultivate my own feelings and opinions on it before I put it out into a public space. Because things can get misconstrued on, the, on, on a tweet uh, or on an Instagram post, and so I think I can, I can dive a little bit deeper on my podcast and people can kind of get the full context of what I mean and how I mean and and what things go behind why I got to this decision. And then, so then I like to post it a few weeks out from the actual incident because um, like a lot of stuff in in culture or in the world, we were really honed in on it for a few days and then we kind of let it slip to the wayside. But some of these really important topics cannot just slip. They can't be just trends. We can't be performative about it. We have to really care about them on a continual basis. You know, months uh, dedicated to these kinds of things or whatever kind of, uh, you know, June is Pride Month. May was Mental Health Awareness Month. Like it's nice and it's good. It's very, very helpful that there's months dedicated to these very, very important topics, but it has to be a continual 365 day thing because the people that go through these things, these struggles, this discrimination, the hate, don't deal with it just in one month. They deal with it all year round, every day of their lives. And so we as people who support them and are allies, the people going through stuff, we have to be with them 365 days of the year, not just one month or not just a week when the conversation is hot or when it's trending on Twitter and we can get clout from our posts, right? That's not what it's about. It's not about that. It's about really being about it. And so it's way more important to scroll through articles and watch videos and really hone in on the information than put out a meaningless tweet that you're not going to stand behind. And so that's why I like to do it on this pod a few weeks later and a few... uh, So I have time to digest this information and that and when people watch this it can be brought back into the public space so we can continue that chain of conversation that allows for this dialogue to happen and allows for the needle to be pushed forward in the right direction so we can have more love support empathy kindness all these things that can really shape the world and make it a more fulfilling happy less divided um less uh polar place with more connection and and stuff like that. So that's kind of my thought process behind that. And so I urge you maybe to do the same, even if you don't have a podcast or a public platform to speak about on it, the conversations that you have in private with your family, your friends, your loved ones, people on the street, people in a coffee shop, those conversations are much more important than putting out a random tweet because you think it's like the right thing to do or because 
whatever whatever your thought process is, I don't know. I'm not you. I can't sit in those shoes. But I can tell you that if you're feeling some type of way about kind of being forced to post on social, know that that's not as important, not nearly as important as diving deep into real, actual hard work, a hard conversations in your real life with the people that are in your circle, holding those people accountable for the words they say and the actions they have and the biases that they have, right? That's where the real work is done and no one sees that, but it makes a difference. There's a chain effect, there's a domino effect that rolls down um, that, that the universe sees and then that karma is brought back and then we start to have, people start to change their hearts. Right, because you can tell someone to change, you can give them the information to change, but really they have to change their heart for them to actually start moving forward in the direction of being about it and th- seeing things a little bit differently and understanding they have biases that they grew up with that they have to unlearn and change and, and move forward from. And so that's where the real work is done is in those conversations in private that no one sees. So keep having them. I acknowledge you for those. I see them, not see them, but I know that they're having and I'm proud of the people who are doing that and I acknowledge that and I see you and I want you to continue doing that. And so social media is a great place to find out information, to be able to click on a link that allows you to dive real deep into some subjects from, from different sides or different viewpoints and get a full overarching view of what you feel and how you believe and how you want to present that in your real life and how you want to show up for those people. And so that's what I say about that and that's kind of the reasoning behind the things that I do, why I do those things. <clears throat> and so that's the, the opening kind of bit which will lead me to talking more about Naomi Osaka in a second. Um, but I also wanna to touch on a few things, right? If you enjoy this podcast, if you like listening to it, if you like me, or if you underst- or if, you, if the things that I say resonate with you and you wanna dive a little deeper with me, I would head over to my Patreon, patreon.com backslash Jackson Stone, and you can sign up for a multitude of tiers, um, which can get you audio messages, merchandise, uh, personalized videos, one-on-one sessions, group sessions, um, all that stuff. And a portion of all the proceeds, no matter what tier you're on, goes to You Are Loved, which is my nonprofit organization, and that's directly funding our mental health initiatives, which include putting together support support groups ran by licensed therapists or sponsoring people's treatment because uh, affordability is one of the biggest barriers to mental health care. <clears throat> so if you want to dive a little deeper with me on a very even more personal level than, than me sharing kind of my thoughts and feelings on this podcast, head over to Patreon. Um, also, if you want to receive a weekly newsletter from me every Friday directly into your email, head over to jacksonstone.net. Put in your email, you'll get a discount code too at my store, so you can use that right away. And then every Friday, you'll get an email from me. And if you want a, a mental health tip of the week starting on every Monday, go to youarelovelife.com, put in your email, and the same kind of thing will happen. You'll get it dropped in your inbox every Monday. So every Monday and Friday, you could potentially hear from me thoughts, ponder things I'm pondering, mental health tips, words of encouragement, inspiration, things that I'm thinking about and trying to be about in my real life that, that could uh, potentially benefit you in your life. <clears throat> And so those are those are kind of the things there. Um, of course, we're always uh, always dropping new merch at shopforeverybody.com. It's my lifestyle brand, um, and uh, it's one of the cool things that I'm really really pumped about. I'm doing with my friend Noah Light, who's creating all the merchandise, and, and, we're, and we're doing some really cool stuff. Um, so I'm pumped about that. <clears throat> um, so yeah, those are just a few things that you can check out uh, if you want to if you're more interested in the things that I do. Um, or if you just listen to this podcast, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I also have a baseball podcast um, called Champions Adjust. Um, we just finished season one of that. Season two will come back in a few months. Um, but I'm pumped about that. I love those conversations about baseball and coaching and leadership. Some of the stuff, the same stuff that I talk on here. Um, but a lot of the stuff that I talk on here is I'm, I'm trying to learn about in my own life. And it's really helped me in my journey. So I speak about it here. So thanks for listening. Grateful for all this. I'm really excited about all the solo episodes that I'm doing. I feel like I've hit my kind of groove on this pod. I'm definitely still going to have guests. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm just really trying to figure out who I want on the show. Because that's important to me to bring that the same kind of vibe and the same kind of energy and the same kind of frequency um, that will resonate with my listeners and will resonate with me. And we can have in-depth, deep conversations about life about struggle, about journey, about success, about overcoming, all those things. 
So we'll definitely have guests. I'm definitely going to have a couple of my friends on uh, later when I go visit them in Chicago here in July. That'll be around this time that this episode drops. I'll be kind of visiting them. And so we'll record a pod. That'll be maybe their third or fourth time on Jackson Talks, everybody. Those are always good conversations. And definitely going to keep doing hotlines. That's just where I have a phone number open for an hour and you guys can call in. I love those. Love hearing from you. Um, Also, drop me any questions you want me to answer, things you want me to talk about on this pod. Let me know what I could do better at. Always appreciate that feedback. It's important for me and my learning. So that's that. Thank you for listening. Now let's get into the meat and bones of this episode, which is Naomi Osaka. So first off, first off, first off, very important, right? She withdrew from the French Open. Now, I absolutely love it. I love it. Absolutely fucking love it when high profile elite professional athletes talk about their mental health. Oh my God, it's so amazing. Because we, like, not me personally, right? Because I played sports at a really high level, so I understand not as much as these folks do, right? Because they're way higher than I could ever have dreamed of getting, but I played a division one. <clears throat> but for the average person, we, we really don't understand like how hard it is for elite athletes to organize their life. They have to strive to be their very best every single day. And so to organize their life in a certain way comes with a lot of challenges and mental health challenges and struggles and pressures and things that we are just not privy to in our lives. But everyone kind of goes through the same amount of, or not the same amount, the same range of emotions, just a varying degrees. And so I absolutely love when professional athletes speak publicly about their mental health, whether it be Dak Prescott, Kevin Love, Naomi Osaka. These people are doing amazing work to move the needle forward on the conversation about mental health, which is something I deeply, 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 deeply care about. I love it. I love it when celebrities do it. I love it when any sort of influencer or famous person does it. I love it because it, it makes the person watching their content content or viewing them or being fans of them, whatever, feel less alone and gives them the strength and the courage to go out in their life and speak about their mental health or go seek help for their mental health. That is, that's what it's all about. I fucking love it. And so I applaud those athletes. And I also say y'all deserve love, support, empathy, and help for anything that you struggle with uh, uh, dealing with your mental health. Much love, right? What Naomi is doing, this is a quote from Michael Gervais. It says, what Naomi is doing, I have seen several extraordinary athletes do in my decades of work. She stands among these athletes who are paving the way for human flourishing. Paving the way for human flourishing. That's what I'm talking about. That's the goal. That's the nugget. That's, that's it. <clears throat> right here's here's what I was talking about a little bit. Um, I'm not another quote from Michael Gervais. I'm not sure most people fully appreciate that high level of scrutiny. Professional athletes live in an exacting and outcome based environments that are very public. That level of stress can amplify underlying dysfunction, whether it's physical, emotional, or mental. Athletes are under a lot of pressure. That's why it's so important for young athletes, youth athletes, high school athletes, college athletes to start taking care of your mental wellness now. Start focusing on these mental skills and the mental training so that you're well equipped to handle these pressures in sport and out of sport because they happen in all areas and all facets of life. <clears throat> and so there's, there's something that people have to realize. There's no correlation between the amount of money you make and mental health struggles. There's no correlation, zero, nothing backs that up. Every single person on the face of this earth at one point or another will deal with a mental health struggle. Now, a mental illness is much different than a mental health struggle. A mental health struggle can be stress, anxiety, overwhelm, heartbreak, rejection, failure. All of these things are mental health or our mental wellness because they deal with our mind and our brain and that's how we think, feel, and act and that encompasses all of that. Now, mental illness, on the other hand, is much different, much more severe and, and deserves different care, support, and treatment than just uh, overall mental health, which every single person on the face of the planet goes through. Mental health does not discriminate. If you have a lot of money, it doesn't just pass you by. 
or if you're a high profile athlete or if you're a celebrity or if you're an entertainer. No, every single person on the face of the earth deals with mental health. That's why it needs to be at the forefront. It needs to be at the forefront. We need to view, treat, and act around mental health very, very differently and more like we do physical health. <clears throat> so that's that. I wanna say that up front, very straightforward, but there is a difference. There is a difference in how we can treat our mental health in terms of these things, right? So high profile athletes, celebrities, or just rich people in general have a lot of money. And a lot of money means that I can refuse to go to work one day or take an extended leave or take an extended break or, or choose not to do something because I have the money to afford that. I have the money to afford that. Now, if someone is working a nine to five job, they're work, work living check to check, they're living on minimum wage, that is not possible. They cannot just decide one day to not go to work or refuse to do something because they will, there's a fear and most likely will happen because if have seen it happen, they will get fired. They will get fired. And so what happens is they hold all that shit in that they're dealing with. They hold it all in until they explode, until they burst, until it becomes too much. So there is a difference between those two. The struggles are the same. The struggles of, of a high profile athlete, a celebrity, a famous person, a rich person, and just a person living in everyday life, the, the resulting mental health struggles are the same. Whether it be anxiety, stress, pressure, overwhelm, depression, right? All they're the same. They're varying degrees and there's different environmental and cultural factors that pay it that go into play with each of these situations, whether it's an elite athlete or someone who works at Walmart. But the person who works at Walmart cannot afford to not go to work because they will get fired. Then if they get fired, they cannot pay their bills and they cannot pay for their rent. Now they're homeless. That's a, a real reality of the situation. It's not downgrading or minimizing anything that Naomi Osaka or any of these athletes do, but they can afford a $15,000 fine because they make $50, $50 million a year. She can afford that. And I'm so pumped, so pumped that she took a stand for herself. So fucking excited because that makes every other athlete underneath who looks up to her say that I can take a stand for myself as well. I'm courageous. I'm brave as well. I can take a stand for my mental health because I'm a priority and my mental health means something. That's brilliant, beautiful. But in the same token, the person at Walmart cannot do that because they cannot afford not to go to work. And so what needs to happen, the general consensus on both these things, on both sides of the spectrum, the bridge that stitches everything together is the fact that we do not view mental health through the right lens. We don't view it through a compassionate, empathetic lens. We view it through a stigmatized, judgmental lens. Why can't I take a mental health day the same as I take a sick day. Why can't I tell my boss that I'm struggling with anxiety or depression and I need a day off and there's no penalty for that? There's no slash. There's no someone's gonna take your spot and then you get less hours at work. There's none of that. We need to view it the same as physical health. If I break my leg, I get time off. I get time off and when my leg is healed, I come back, I'm good to go. What if I have the same sickness but just up here? And it's an illness. It can be an illness. There's varying degrees, right? And there's varying degrees of it. And we have to be honest about what degree we're in and what emotions we're feeling. That's why we have to have open dialogue with our bosses, with our employees. That's why you have to create a culture of that at your workplace. You have to create a culture of that in where you work so that your employees feel safe and secure and going to you about what they're struggling with. And so that they can take the time off to get to figure out what they need to get the help they need, the care they need and come back to work full throttle, ready to go their best selves ever. The same thing Naomi Osaka is doing and showing the world that it's possible on the most high pressure filled stage. She's showing that it's possible, but you go down the food chain and you look at someone working at Walmart, it's just not possible for them to refuse to do something that they've been told to do or they will get fired. And getting fired means they don't get a weekly check or a check every two weeks. It means they can't afford their food and they can't afford their rent. So there's different cultural environment or factors that go into play in each different person's life because we each live a unique life. And so really my point in saying this is that we have to view and treat mental health differently across all areas of life whether it's a celebrity, influencer, athlete, person, mom, dad, worker, 
grocery store. Anyone who struggles with mental health deserves that care, that treatment, that love, and that extended break to get themselves right. But what we should be talking, not what we should be, but we can be talking about is being deserving of mental health care before you get into a deep, deep crisis. That's the only time we feel like we deserve help is when we feel like we're on the brink of explosion and things are about to spiral out of control. We're thinking about ending our lives. We're thinking about what it would be like if we were dead. We're thinking about, I'm going to explode. I have no room. We can't wait till that moment to care for our mental health. That's why I always talk about implementing a toolkit, taking inventory on your life, understanding when things do start to go wrong, what do you have? You have a shit, you have a list to do when shit goes bad list. Shit to do when shit goes bad list. That's a mental health toolkit, that's inventory. That's understanding what I need and how I need it, when I need it, when I'm struggling. And that goes for every person, it's different for people all across the board, what that mental health toolkit will be like and how we implement it in our lives. But that's what it's talk, That's what it's about. Whether it's anyone dealing with the struggle, the, the environmental and cultural factors are, go, are different. They play a different uh, part and factor in each person's life, where they at in their life and what they do for a living. But what you do for a living or who you are doesn't matter when it comes to your mental health, right? Because mental health, again, does not discriminate where you're from, where you live, your job. Yes, those factors um, influence your mental health. Of course they do. They play a huge part in your family life, your home life, your job life, your friends, your relationships. All of that stuff highly impacts your mental health, highly. But it's different in different uh, groups, in different communities, in different areas of the world. It's all different. But the biggest acts, the, some of the biggest barriers to accessing mental health treatment are affordability, and accessibility. No one is going to decide to, if, if there's a decision to make between paying my rent and having a place to live or getting mental health treatment, you're going to pay for your rent. And so if we can destroy, smash, break down that affordability uh, barrier to mental health care, then more people will be willing to go seek it. And then you have the accessibility care, right? Affordability and accessibility are the two of the biggest barriers into going seek and mental health going to seek mental health treatment and so if we can work on those that's where the golden nugget is and then it's about changing the culture changing how the culture in the world views mental health mental health is health it's not a separate being it's not two different parts it's not you have a body and a mind they're not just like two no they're all in one thing together and we have to work on them as a union they're inseparable we work on them together in mind body connection it's embodied that's who you are as a person and you have to take care of both physical and mental it's all joined together and so the whole point of this right the whole point of this is to say that it's amazing um it's amazing when high profile folks share their mental health journeys. It pushes the needle forward. It changes the conversation. It gives people who watch them and view them and care about them or are fans of them the power to go do it themselves. They're giving them the permission. I'm saying, I'm doing it so you can do it too. I'm giving, I have the courage and the bravery to go out and do this and I'm giving that courage and that bravery to you and that shows the person listening and watching, I can do this too. I can care about myself. I can care about my mental health. I'm giving myself permission to feel and love and get better and get help and get treatment. But there's also different environmental and cultural factors that affect people in different ways in what they do and where they live and all of that stuff. So a lot of factors go into play for our psychological health. It's not just what's going on in our head, it's what's going on around us that's affecting what's going on inside of our head. And what are the barriers to seeking mental health treatment and how do we uh, break those down to give mental health care to every single person, no matter what or who they are. You deserve love, support, and care for your mental health, for your mental wellness, for your mental fitness. It's important to take care of it, start taking inventory, start looking at your toolkit, and figuring out a shit to do when shit goes wrong list. Start doing that now. And so <clears throat> I'll end this way. I applaud 
Naomi Osaka and all the athletes and celebrities that have ever come forward to talk about their mental health. Every time you do, I will talk about it on this pod or I will tweet about it because that means a great deal to me. I hope that the stuff that I talk about and the stuff that I do can be just as it can be seen just as much to push the needle forward in a conversation that's so deeply needed um, about mental health, about suicide, about understanding what's going on in our head and how we can best serve ourselves so we can best serve other people. Human connection, relationships, community, all that stuff is so, so important and it creates deeper meaning for our life. Deeper meaning means more fulfillment, more fulfillment means more joy, more joy means better life. And so that's what I have to say. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you watching. If you have any comments or concerns or anything that I said didn't resonate with you or you didn't understand it or you feel a different way, let's have a conversation about it. Comment below or DM me. Let's go in depth about this. That's the whole point of these conversations is to learn more, to grow more, to have open and honest and responsible dialogue about how we feel or how we understood something or what it meant to us. So let's let's conversate more. I appreciate you watching deeply. I love this community of Jackson Talks, everybody. You guys make this podcast great and you make it fun for me to do and come in here and research and explore and try to talk about the hard things because that's how we that's how we move the needle forward, it's how we stitch together. Um, so we become a support system because no one does anything great alone and I feel like I'm not alone because I have you guys and I love you for that thank you for watching hit subscribe uh, rate us and review us on Apple and uh, have a good fucking day man happy Tuesday cheers